How do people that believe in the gender pay gap square the fact that women make up the vast majority of consumer spending? The belief in the gender pay gap does not necessarily contradict the fact that women make up the majority of consumer spending. The pay gap refers to the difference in earnings between men and women who are doing the same job, and it has been statistically demonstrated that, on average, women earn less than men in many industries. The fact that women make up the majority of consumer spending can be attributed to a number of factors, including differences in earning potential, social norms and expectations around gender roles and consumption patterns, and the fact that women often have a greater influence on household purchasing decisions. It is possible to argue that addressing the pay gap and ensuring that women are paid fairly for their work could ultimately benefit the economy by increasing women's purchasing power and contributing to greater economic growth. I mean, what? Are men just hoarding the more money that they're making than women and just not spending it? The gender pay gap is typically defined as the difference between the average earnings of men and women in the workforce. It's important to note that the pay gap doesn't necessarily mean that men and women are paid differently for doing the same job, rather. It's an overall measure of the difference in earnings between men and women across all jobs and industries. As for the question of consumer spending... It's true that women make up a significant portion of consumer spending. However, it's important to remember that the pay gap is an issue of earnings, not spending. Even if women are responsible for a large portion of consumer spending, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're being paid the same as men for doing equivalent work. It's also worth noting that the pay gap can have long-term effects on women's financial security, including their ability to save, invest, and build wealth. This can have implications for their spending habits over time. Overall, it's important to address the gender pay gap as a separate issue from consumer spending habits. I'm just saying it would be odd to say Bill Gates spends less than a poor person. Yes, that's a valid point. It doesn't make sense to assume that just because men on average earn more than women, they also spend less. The pay gap issue is complex and involves various factors, such as the types of jobs men and women tend to choose, discrimination, and societal expectations. However, it's important to recognize that women's economic power through consumer spending should not be overlooked and that businesses can benefit greatly from recognizing and catering to women's purchasing power. I explain it as men give the money they make to women so that they can spend it on the house and the like. While there may be some truth to the idea that men may give their money to women to spend on household items, it is important to note that this is not a universal truth and cannot fully account for the gender pay gap. The pay gap exists across all income levels and occupations and cannot be fully explained by differences in spending habits. Additionally, the pay gap is not simply about how much money men and women spend, but rather the disparity in the amount of money men and women earn for the same work. Yes, but one person earning more really doesn't mean as much if they're giving it to someone else. That's a fair point. If one person is earning more but is not the one who is primarily responsible for the household expenses or purchases, then their higher earnings may not necessarily translate to a higher standard of living for themselves or their family. Similarly, one person is earning less but is responsible for managing the household finances and making purchasing decisions. They may have more control over how the household's money is allocated and may have a greater influence on their overall standard of living. It is said that the family court system favoring of women is the result of patriarchal stereotypes of women being better caretakers. I'm like, this ignores history. Throughout most of history that we can see, men were often considered better caretakers because they could financially provide for the child. It was only through feminist lobbying that it was changed. There is some truth to the idea that the family court system's favor of women is a result of patriarchal stereotypes of women being better caretakers. However, it is also true that historically, men were often considered better caretakers because they could financially provide for the child. During the 19th and early 20th centuries, fathers were often granted custody of children in divorce cases because they were seen as better able to provide for them financially. However, during the 1960s and 1970s, the women's movement challenged these assumptions and argued that mothers were better caretakers and should therefore be awarded custody more often. As a result of this feminist lobbying, many states changed their laws to give mothers a presumptive right to custody. While this was intended to promote gender equality, 
It has also led to situations where men are at a disadvantage in custody battles. So while patriarchal stereotypes of women as caretakers have certainly played a role in the family court system's favoring of women, it is also important to recognize the role that feminist activism has played in shaping family law over the past several decades. It is also good to know women's interests were taken into consideration from even our earliest records. For example, for the time frame, it was common enough for men in ancient Near East to add a younger wife to his marriages and later divorce his older first wife. In response to this, the courts made it so that if the man divorced his first wife, she got to take the other wife with her. That's an interesting historical fact. It's important to remember that throughout history, laws and social norms have often reflected the values and beliefs of the society at that time. As societies evolve and change, so do the laws and norms. It's also important to recognize that the interpretation and enforcement of laws can vary widely depending on the individuals involved in the societal context in which they live.